Oh, here we go. DDT, DDT, DDT. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Two days ago, a man whose controversial predictions of a forthcoming global catastrophe have made him an international figure arrived at London's Heathrow Airport. He is Paul Ehrlich, professor of biology at Stanford University, California, and the chief spokesman for the so-called ecological movement. Dr. Ehrlich, just how realistic is your projected theory of the eco-catastrophe? Well, I, I think that uh, it's getting more realistic all the time. The signs are getting worse, but I still have considerable hope because although governments are very slow, uh, people all over the world are uh, awakening very rapidly. Out of a snoz on him, isn't there? Out of a snoz. What the real danger is. In much the same way as the science of entomology had been changed in the 1950s, now ecology was transformed by the social and political pressures of the early 70s. Ecologists became the moral and spiritual guardians of a new view of the human relationship oh. to nature. And they too cited Darwin's laws to prove that their view was correct. Nature has a set of laws that all organisms have to obey by necessity because that's the way they evolve and this applies to human beings very much so. If we need to introduce into our lives nature it is a need that is enormously deep. Look around you wherever you go into homes. They are not only living flowers, they're not only aquaria and pets. Look at the wall, what do we see? Sunflowers by Van Gogh or irises by Van Gogh. Mate, but listen, right? If I was living out in the bloody African prairie and a lion tried to kill me, I'd have to kill the lion, right? If I was starving, I'd have to kill a bloody deer to eat the the deer and if i'm trying to plant some corn in a field and some insects try to eat it i'm well within my rights to kill the insect this is nature's way what, what, what's what's he on about i don't understand i don't understand i'm with the ddt guys 100 percent or, or pictures photographs of landscapes you don't see framed in a house a picture of a crankshaft from a from a ford or, or a, 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 a tin can squashed. Now, in, in modern art, which is a sick art, because it reflects the confusion in the human minds, yes, indeed. Darwin's so big that he can support any number of generalizations about the world. I mean, given Darwin's image as a scientific saint, people inevitably try to get him on the side of their view of nature. Now, Darwin was complex. In The Origin of Species, for example, the metaphors tumble over one another in the most unscientific way. Sure, nature's seen as being at war, but nature's also likened to a web of complex relations. And here then was another aspect of Darwin for people to seize on for their own purposes. Darwin gave them a basis for urging us not to take control of nature, but to cooperate with it, to stay with it. I'm, I'm sorry, right, but this is all bullshit because this guy is not, a, he's not above flattening flattening the ground to build a house presumably he lives in a house he's not above you know that building he's standing in all of that was nature once His trees had to be chopped down the ground needed to be leveled it needed to be paved over it needed to be transformed to be habitable for humans to be habitable for him he was he's for all of that what's the difference between that and using a bit of ddt on your on your crops that's my question. Then it's balance. Again, Darwin serves up slogans. In the popular imagination, scientific theories are something fixed, and if they're good theories and accepted by creditable people, then they're absolute, and that's that. What people don't understand is that scientific theories never have a single meaning. They, always, they become a cultural property they are usable, serviceable for different interested parties. Gracious, what a scandal! Every other girl would cry. She can't hold a candle to somebody such as I. But who got the banker's boy and fifteen thousand quid? 
The story of DDT continues. The head of a large property company has called a press conference to announce that he has stopped construction in one of his skyscrapers. Yeah. Let me move over this side to have a more light. What's happening here this morning? Well, uh, the peregrine falcons have been nesting in this building for five years. And every year, the Paragon Society comes and retrieves the eggs. The eggs uh, will not hatch here because uh, the, due to DDT contamination, they're too weak for the bird to sit on. We're going to open window. Quick. Okay. Quick. Somebody's pushing it. Each year, they bring back a, a small baby for the bird so that they feel that uh, they've completed the cycle. Okay. You all, did you want to come in closer? Basically, the, the people are here because it's not just a story about the, the eggs being laid and gathered. It's a story about how this particular developer, the J.H. Snyder Company, has literally suspended construction in this area during the mating season of these particular birds and how it's a, an excellent idea of how it, Developers and business people can participate in environmental concerns. Come on. Plenty of time he's going to stay. That woman's voice was so kind of high pitched and fast. She sounded like when you do the, you know, sometimes on uh, YouTube you can do like the double speed. She sounded like a double speed. <laughs> she sounded like you sped her up. Does everybody have everything they need in the way of shots? You saw the number of TV cameras and the media people that were up here today watching the manipulation going on. This, in effect, is really a, a, a myth being born or being fostered at any rate. Looking out from the ledge 26 floors above Wilshire Boulevard, it's hard to believe that the Falcons would pick an urban area like this to nest. The myth the in this case is that the uh, peregrine falcon is sacred. Granted, it's a, it's a precious species. We were about to lose it perhaps a number of years ago. Now we have peregrines back in good numbers. There have been dramatic uh, recoveries. I think it's just an unrealistic attitude about how, how sensitive parts of nature are. At the start of the DDT litigation in 1966, science had become the way that the human beings could avoid responsibility. Science would take care of us. After the DDT wars, we knew that science was not necessarily going to be the answer. But mankind in the 20th century still wanted to avoid responsibility for their own individual actions. Now it's nature that's going to permit us to shift the responsibility from human beings to some force that we don't have to take responsibility for. we're talking about is a very profound internal shift of attitude and of values. This is the gift of ecology to human beings and really to all species today. And that gift uh, can give rise to not utopia, but ecotopia, which is this profound sense of place, the sense of coming home at last. The kinds of ideas about ecology and... I mean, she can say that, but what if you die of malaria, love? I mean, you wouldn't be saying that if you were dying of malaria. You'd be like, "Give me the, give me the science to save my life." I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm in a, I'm kind of, um, kind of a, a caught between two two views in this particular one. Environment that we see today, I don't believe, are any more scientific or rational than previous notions of nature. In both cases, uh, people that talk about them are saying, look, this is scientific. I'm not making this up. These are not my hopes and dreams. This is what science tells us. But in both cases, I think what you can see happening is there are particular kinds of social ideals being read back to us as if they were lessons derived from science itself. In the case of contemporary ecology, it seems to me what we're actually getting is a kind of utopia of a perfectly constructed, complex universe of natural things. And from that universe, one tries to, to derive various kinds of laws that can help us live better as human beings. I think it is a moral lesson. There is a possibility for a kind of utopia, 
We've dreamed about it, and that possibility exists in our future. The scientific and technological notions of the 1950s, the ideas of endless possibilities for exploitation of nature, are now seen as ill-conceived and ill-guided. I'm haunted by the possibility that the ideas of ecology that we now embrace today may in 30 or 40 years seem similarly ill-conceived. And they're no more scientific than, let's say, other notions of nature that we have looked to in the past. But, but here, here's the thing, right? They must still use pesticides. They, they, they must still spray the... There's no way they do mass industrial farming without some sort of insecticide. Or do they... Or just farmers just let caterpillars eat all their crops that doesn't happen so they still use pesticides they just don't use ddt they use some other one so you know Fast. at least when science was our god we felt that we were actively doing something we were in control now there are too many people that say there's nothing i can do nature will take care of it i just will continue fat dumb and happy the way i am we must go back to the simple lesson of history every human being concerned enough dedicated enough and willing to make the sacrifice can change the world around them. In 1860, Charles Darwin wrote to a friend in America about whether it is possible to seek divine providence in nature. I feel most deeply, he said, that the whole subject is too profound for the human intellect. A dog might as well speculate on the mind of Newton. Let each man hope and believe what he can. Come on, folks. We just gotta get to the top. Top? Top of what? Why, the top of the... Oh. Oh, gosh. Gosh, I just can't pull... It, it, this, this is kind of an interesting one from Curtis because it's it's almost um, Foucauldian, this episode, where he's basically showing that whatever, like, whatever happens, you have a truth regime, you have a kind of morality and a worldview that comes prior to science and that it's going to be used which whatever the actual facts are it's going to be used one way or the other interesting 